Okay, thank you everybody for joining us for today's talk. Uh, we'll be talking about fireflies. Uh, we're glad to have Sonny uh, with us here today. Sonny is from our HQ. We'll talk about him a bit more, introduce him later on. Uh, just a bit sharing uh, before we kick off the meeting, uh, the talk. So this is our number 13th uh, talk, and we are actually focusing on the importance of the rivers as well as the coastal area. And the reason we are doing that is because um, there is a big development coming up in uh, on the coast of uh, Port Dixon and Malacca. And uh, we would like to highlight the beauty of the area, the Sungai Lingi, as well as the uh, coastal area. The coastal is where the, the turtles are, uh, are landing as well as the terrapins as well. So today we'll be talking about uh, the beauty of fireflies on the Sungai uh, Lingi and Sung Sungai Rambao. Um, we have about 50% of um, audience today uh, new to us. So basically MNS is a membership based uh, society and um, join us, be a voice for nature. Um, it only costs like 80 ringgit uh, for family uh, per year, 80 ringgit per year for family membership. Uh, the website is there, mns.my slash join us. And basically what, what you do is that um, by, by being a member, you actually become a voice for nature because when we go and speak to, uh, to, the, to the public, to the government agencies, um, you know, we, we bring your voices, your concern to them. Uh, so basically uh, one of our less known activities, but very critical is that we are as an NGO on the uh, EIA, uh, Environmental Impact Assessment uh, Committee uh, with the government. So any major projects that uh, that is uh, need to be done, um, then we will, we will sit in with the various department heads uh, and then we will give advice. So this is very critical, but very less known to, to people, okay? So, um, our focus will start in October and we'll finish in January on, on this uh, river area. So basically last week we did the river system. So today we do fireflies. And then on the 7th, uh, we do the uh, tiger prawns, uh, Udangala, uh, followed by mangroves, turtle and terrapins and crocodiles, okay? Our schedule may change depending on the availability of the speakers, all right? But we'll keep you posted because you're already on our, our list. Okay, so these are uh, just uh, our online information. Okay, so today uh, we have about 40 minutes of talk by Sunny. Uh, basically, Sunny is a, an active MNS member since 1985. Uh, he began his career in uh, MNS conservation in 97, and his first task was to find out more about fireflies. He met later Dr. Oba uh, Nobuyoshi, a regional firefly expert who became his mentor. He is currently the wetlands program manager and two main areas of work is, in, uh, is actually conserving the North Central Selangor Coast, IBA, which is an important migratory uh, bird flyway site and a firefly conservation initiative. His current work is in Bukit Kiara um, and Sungai Timun and He's actually uh, compiling the Malaysian mangrove uh, directory. He's he currently serves as the honorary secretary for Fireflyers International Network and co-chairs the IUCN uh, SSE Firefly Specialist Group. So, and in, in 2018, actually the World Firefly Day, uh, which is the, um, he, would, he will share more later on, uh, is actually uh, proposed and uh, by Sunny. So well done, Sunny. So Sunny, I'll hand over the share, sharing of slides to you. Thank you. Okay, uh, yeah, hang on. Eh? It's okay, no problem. Okay, thank you, uh, Uti, uh, for inviting me to, this, to give this talk, uh, this series of talk about Sungai Lingi. Uh, but uh, okay, this is a general talk of 
apply. Uh, so, oh, at least you have an underlying ID or a bar, right? So, the, uh, the, the title put here is a uh, Firefly as the uh, uh, childhood the childhood insect. Why why I put that is uh, because uh, when we are young, uh, especially in the old days where there are more green areas, so I'm sure many of you have, uh, have seen fireflies when you're young, and then uh, that's that's how uh, we we remember them as a light in the dark sky. But uh, I'm sure many of you or myself also haven't really uh, catch one and really see what is how 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 is the insect look like. So uh, and uh, after we grew up, I remember I don't see them anymore because and then I shifted to KL. So it's it's just a childhood insect until I I join MNA. And then they give me, uh, ask me to find out more about fireflies. So that's how, uh, so that's how this uh, I, I get to learn more about fireflies. And here you can see on the right is the uh, uh, let me uh, because it's blocking. Uh, the, so I have to switch off this. Okay, so. Uh, here you can see the Chinese word uh, of fireflies, ying fo chong. That's uh, in Cantonese, ying fo chong. Uh, so ying in the first word on the left is actually firefly itself. And I'm not sure why the Chinese word they put in the fo chong, which means the uh, uh, fire and worm. So, so I guess when the Chinese uh, give this word, this is what I presume. Uh, so the ying at the beginning is the flying fire, the firefly. And then the fo chong is the one on the ground uh, with the lights on. Uh, it's a worm and then it's a small little worm and walking on the ground with the light on. So that is the lava and the and all the female firefly. That's how I I I assume <laughs> they put it into that world. So, uh, hang on, uh, go down the slides. Okay, uh, we'll talk about what is a firefly. Generally, uh, about firefly itself, the life history, and then uh, where do they live, and then where you can find them. And uh, after that, we are, I'm going to talk about the global threats. Globally, how threatened are them? And what are the threats to them? And what are the benefits of uh, firefly to us, uh, to the environment? So there must be a reason why firefly exists. And, uh, and then uh, what are the conservation work uh, in some places around the world has been done? And finally, uh, it's about you, yourself, uh, how you can help uh, protect this firefly. And you can also play a role uh, to give awareness and protect this firefly. Uh, or before that, uh, this uh, picture is done by Elvina. She won the first prize in the adult I found this on Etimo online. Uh, it's during the 17th century in the dictionary, you can find the word firefly. So it's an English word from the British. Uh, so, and later on, of course, uh, this word went to America. Uh, but in America itself, uh, they use the word lightning bug, especially in the East Coast and the Southern 
part of America. And then they, they were sort of uh, not really happy uh, to change the word into firefly so because they are so used to it. And of course, there are many other words uh, about fireflies in their own, especially in their own dialect. Uh, and uh, glowworm, glowworm is, is also a, a British word uh, because in, in UK there is only one firefly and then the female is on the ground so it cannot fly so they call it a glowworm so what it refers to for firefly a glowworm is actually the, the lava of the firefly that is the baby firefly or the female flightless firefly so it's an adult but it cannot fly so it, it is called a glowworm uh, I seldom use the word glowworm I will just use a uh, flightless female or firefly baby or firefly lava so but uh, I mean you are free to use whatever word, word as long as people understand of course in New Zealand when you say glowworm uh, they will think of the pie <laughs> that hangs uh, that, that uh, you found in the caves uh. So that is not a firefly, but that is a fly itself. So uh, in New Zealand, you don't find firefly there. So, and I written three words at the bottom: kunang kunang, klip klip, api api. These are the local Malay name for fireflies. Uh, of course, uh, kunang kunang is uh, seldom used, but only in certain areas, especially in Sungai Linggi, Rambaho, they use Kunang Kunang. Uh, probably they are because of their descendants are from Indonesia. So they use this word. And uh, in Indonesia, they use Kunang Kunang. So in Malaysia, clip clip yeah, usually uh, talks about the one that, that flashes when it flies. And Kunang Kunang, they only use it uh, for the glowing fireflies. And you seldom hear Api Api, but it's been used uh, uh, in some some local places. So I'm sure there are other uh, names for fireflies in Malay. Uh, maybe you can just let us know. Uh, you can send me a mail and then uh, so beside us, uh, what is what other word is used for firefly? So that's the introduction and uh, I talk about. Uh, uh, the, about the firefly, uh, where it's in the classification is located, uh, it's an insect, uh, so class insecta, in, uh, they are classified into coloptera, which co uh, common name is beetle. So they name it coloptera because the, uh, there's a wing protection, a wing shield to protect the flight wings, uh, as you can see here in the, the, the picture of this uh, firefly here. Uh, you can see the wing shield and then uh, you further on because uh, the classification of firefly is still ongoing and this is can be said uh, latest classification so in Malaysia there are three subfamilies of firefly the Lysilini, Lamprini and Autotretini mm -hmm. and, and uh, there's a lot of other subfamilies uh, around the world so this is uh, the three most commonly found in Malaysia, these three subfamilies. And apart from that, uh, there are around maybe around four beetles that also give out light. So the closest relative to a firefly is the starworm, the regal media. So this is a starworm in Malay, it's called Ulat Bintang. Uh, it's very common, quite found in Malaysia. Uh, you can also see it in Bukit Kera. So that's how common it is. And uh, oh, look at that. This uh, little boy here, five-year-old boy, he's folded a origami firefly uh, uh, during the World Firefly Day. So we, uh, so we have some good folds from, uh, from, from all the uh, folders around, around Thailand and Malaysia since we share this contact. So, Firefly is a soft body beetle. You can see here the abdomen is soft and it's only protected by the wing shield, the electron. And then you can see the flight wings here. And when it fold it, fold together the wings, uh, you join in the middle. 
and fireflies will have a head shield but for this species the head shield is very small uh, you cannot cover the eye fully and but some species you can find the head shield uh, can cover the whole head itself the eyes and then they have a transparent window here so that the fireflies can see above uh, when they are resting or flying and then fireflies will have big compound eyes uh, not as big as a fly but it's big enough and sensitive enough to uh, capture the lights uh, uh, when they communicate so if you turn the firefly around at the back at the bottom here you can see the light organs or the lanterns these are the air organs that produces the light that you see at night so uh, and uh, and this is uh, very the light is very important for the firefly as they communicate with this light so here is a just a example of the different type of fireflies uh, all sort of shape and size and then you can see the antenna is uh, some are feathery some are straight some are short some are long and then the different color and also the uh, lanterns uh, of, of all the different shapes uh, and uh, size and also you can see here the wire here is a you can see the firefly there are some that are very small less than four millimeters and then you have the big one here this is the flightless female it's a huge one here uh, and if you look at it uh, the the firefly on the left this is the fossil firefly found in the amber and that's when the dinosaurs were at the time and fireflies were there and they still look alike as their ancestors uh, some of them uh, the arrangement of these fireflies are not according to the region or countries i just put it uh, uh, randomly but uh, you can see that it covers uh, one two three four one two three four five five six continents and but you won't find it in antarctica uh, new zealand some mid atlantic ocean islands and mid pacific ocean islands in australia you can only find find them in the subtropics in the northern area of queensland and northern territories uh, those are the mangrove areas of uh, australia and uh, diversity is huge uh, more than 2000 species and counting and uh, because there's uh, not many uh, researchers in certain countries and even continent like africa <laughs> so there are lack of researchers there and the subcontinent of uh, uh, india uh, this are the areas where you can find a lot of fireflies uh, because they have subtropical forests and tropical forests and fireflies 2000 over with a lot of different life history traits itself uh, which i will mention a bit uh, later on in general and and some exceptions so all fireflies on the uh, how do we recognize the male and the female the male we have if you look carefully another picture by Radim, a very beautiful time-lapse picture uh, here are the bitter 
Bible giving out light is called bioluminescent. It's a term that biologically you produce uh, uh, light from the organism, uh, which is uh, between uh, which a chemical reaction that occurs, and from there the excitation of the molecules and give out the photons. Uh, so that's how the light is given out. And here you can see a comic strip. Uh, it's quite funny. Uh, so they, they tell you the two chemicals that produces the light. And uh, some, uh, most fireflies come out at night. Most of them, all of them, I would say. But there are, of course, exceptions again. Uh, these are the daytime firefly that come out in the day, or in scientific term, it's called a diurnal firefly. And your left is the Drilaster species from Taiwan, and the nearest to us is Singapore. In Singapore, it's the Lucidina firefly. They, if you look at the antenna, it's quite long, and then it's specially uh, special antenna to sense the pheromones or the smell of the female so they give up scent so in the daytime they don't rely much on sight they of course they do but because you look at the compound eyes it's very tiny and uh, they rely more on smell so they are trees the three just to show you the example of the three subfamilies that you find in Malaysia, the Lucilani, these are small fireflies that flashes. They are very small, uh, less five millimeter until one cm. They are small ones and then they flash around when they fly and both males and females fly. With some exception, they do have some flightless female. And in the middle is the Lampririni. These are the bigger fireflies, uh, more than 1.5 centimeter long. Uh, they, most of them will have the uh, flightless female. Uh, and the autotretinis are the, uh, quite an unusual firefly. Uh, here I only have a uh, lava stage of the fireflies and they are quite uh, nice looking. <laughs> uh, so these are the three subfamilies and uh, fireflies, uh, some, uh, especially the cantarids, uh, uh, beetles, they tend to mimic the firefly and of course there are other insects they also mimic the fireflies and uh, the reason why they mimic the fireflies because fireflies contain toxin uh, so there are predators uh, eating them also but I mean uh, if they try once I don't think they will try again because it doesn't taste nice <laughs> and they take a lot they can die also <laughs> so, so that's why uh, some other insects mimic the fireflies and how do you know this is a mimic? They walk very fast when you disturb them <laughs> and then the eyes are very small, so they are mimics. And then no, of course they don't have the lights. And uh, where do you find them? Uh, they, they like moist area, warm moist area. Uh, wetlands, uh, you can find in the pit swamp on your top left. The canals in the pit swamp and then the mangrove uh, rivers, along the mangrove rivers. In the middle and then of course the uh, paddy fields they will have the aquatic fireflies in the paddy fields but in Malaysia I haven't seen any aquatic firefly yet and uh, in the forest at the bottom uh, lowland highland until 6,000 feet you can still find fireflies and on waterfall walls uh, there are lava staying there and these are the semi-aquatic fireflies there. so they uh, Habitats are very diverse and around the world even you can find in desert canyons where there are water. Uh, so there are fireflies there, upraised reefs along the coast in New Guinea, you can find it. Swales, uh, there is the coastal wetland and grassland in other countries, uh, so other disturbed areas. Some habitat, uh, some in habitat in like uh, specialized habitat and also because they also contain food that are they are specialized in and some are generalists <laughs> they can stay anywhere and uh, fireflies if the condition is right they are food they are shelter they will and then they can be found in the urban habitat 
So as you can see here, this is the house of my friend in Thailand. So you can see the firefly flying around in the place. And then on the right is Bukit Kiara, uh, powerful LED lights, but along the drains. And you can see the lava of the firefly, of the giant firefly. So, and why do they give out light? Uh, the, of course, the male will say, marry me. So that's the message given to the female. Uh, it's, to, it's a special language of light signals that uh, communicate between the males and the female. So the, then of the same species so that the female can uh, answer back to the male. And here you can see the uh, special light patterns. Uh, some, most of them flash the lights and then uh, and this is found in Smoky Mountain in US, very, uh, very famous area for fireflies. And then they give out different different light signals of different species. Uh, so they are very species specific, these uh, uh, courtship signals. So uh, then there are also those uh, firefly. Uh, this is a green ghost in America. They don't flash, but they give out a glow. Actually, those are flashes. It's very rapid flash and it becomes a glow. So there are two types, the glowing ones and the flashing ones. And of course, the most specialized one, uh, very successful uh, in, uh, in, 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 in population wise, they are very, they are very huge in population. It's the congregating fireflies. The very successful way of uh, calling the females is because they flash together, synchronizing the flash, and then to call the females. So they are, and then in Malaysia, you will see in Slangu at the bottom left, firefly stays on the trees and they do their flashing synchronously or unsynchronously on the trees. Uh, and then I think this is a better method of not wasting so much time like the US, Japan, and Mexico, they synchronize a flash throughout flying. So they are actually using a lot of energy doing that. And these are very, um, you can say it's rare fireflies. Not many places have them and they are very successful. Of course, it depends on the habitat. If the habitat has a lot of food, uh, of course, they can support a huge population. Here, I'll talk about the Mangrove fireflies, which are found in the Asian area, the mangrove area from East India up to Hong Kong, coast of China, the Asian countries, and New Zealand, eh, New Guinea islands, and also the Northern Australia. So these fireflies live in mangrove. These are specialized mangrove fireflies. Uh, in Malaysia, we have around 13 of them. And now, uh, it used to call teroptics in the old days, but now they have uh, reclassified it. The Australian, they call it another name. And then in New Guinea, they call it Trisinuita and Mediopteryx. So uh, the actual and teroptic sticks to the ASEAN mangrove area. And on the right, you can see the famous synchronous firefly, the teroptic malaki in is from Thailand. <clears throat> so as you can see, they are the fireflies are on the uh, Brambang tree uh, along the river and they always occupy one leaf each. And uh, fireflies, the tropic firefly is less than five millimeter long, uh, except for one that is uh, uh, nearly a one centimeter long, which is the uh, tropic valida. Uh, this is a tropic, uh, I think it's a tanner. Uh, yeah, it's a tanner in the middle. And uh, they have uh, they are, the male like organs are bipartite at the second segment. There are three like organs actually, and two small one, two small one at the bottom and one at the top. I don't know why. We don't know why it is like that, but uh, I think it's a uh, energy saving. <laughs> uh, and the females, of course, have one and both fly. And tropics means a uh, bend wing tip. As you can see, the uh, 
still here is bent at the bottom. Uh, so it's a very uh, special uh, species uh, dinner. Yeah. And uh, here, uh, the mangrove fireflies, kunang kunang, as they call in Sungai Linggi and Rambau. Uh, Linggi is the one on the west side, as, and the Rambau is on the right side. <clears throat> and uh, both of these river at the olden times, uh, big ships can actually go upstream, but now they are quite uh, full of sediments, uh, so especially the Lingui side. And the fireflies are found along, uh, you can see the flag area. Flags, so these are the points they are found in Sungai Rambau. Uh, and they are on the more, on the Negri Simlan side, as the Malacca side has more land clearing. So. And uh, Lingui itself uh, is quite fragmented uh, mangroves, uh, so they are not really uh, uh, found in as good as in uh, Sungai Rambau. Uh, how many species? Uh, uh, there are two uh, synchronous fireflies. You can find there the Malake and the Tanner. Malake is a very in very small population and Tanner in bigger population. And uh, in Thailand, Malake is more and there's only one area where they can find Tanner in the south of Thailand. So uh, it's quite interesting why this uh, happens. Uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, it's interesting uh, for maybe future researchers to to study this. And they have another one, the non-synchronous firefly. It's called Tropics asymmetria because uh, if you look at the end here, at the end of the firefly, you will see some finger-like projection in the middle. So for asymmetry, one of it is uh, not symmetrical to each other. So it's another, it's called asymmetry. And it's uh, non-synchronous. And they are found in both rivers. So these uh, fireflies, they are life site. They, they go undergo metamorphosis in four stages, uh, just like the butterfly. You start from the eggs and then they hatch out into lava, the baby firefly, and then uh, they will grow maybe in five or six, four or five in star, we call it, and they will then pupae, and then they will become a pupa in the either on the ground or in the thick uh, cave, a mud, mud hole, mud cave. And then from there, they will become an adult. So uh, at the, on the on the left you can see the non-synchronous firefly, a recent study by uh, Dr. Jaikla from Thailand and the uh, Tropics Center, the synchronous firefly uh, study from Frim. So both of these studies are in the lab. So you repeat them, uh, the life cycle may be a bit longer, so uh, shorter. So maybe in the wild it's a bit longer. So basically, they are around three months to uh, thirty uh, seven months. Uh, so that's the uh, average of tropics firefly. And uh, mangrove firefly habitats are along the uh, uh, the river, the mangrove river. And the red color signifies the display trees where the male display themselves, and then at back. Uh, maybe around 50 to 100 meters are the where the lava is and where the female fly back to lay their eggs and then where the adults also rest on the trees at the back or along the on the um, display trees. Uh, display trees are where the fireflies display themselves. So the, the length of this, this uh, the habitat of these fireflies are called the uh, congregating firefly zone. Inside. And uh, in 2009 and, uh, and 2010, uh, did the survey and also uh, literature survey and then uh, plot the map of the congregating fireflies in Malaysia. Uh, and uh, it comes up to more than 100 of them. These are just based on uh, uh, websites, uh, literature research, and then uh, actual surveys. And in Sarawak, is the survey is done by Miri Branch, uh, MNS Miri Branch. So they did the Northern uh, Sarawak and I did the uh, Peninsula Malaysia. 
so Sapa uh, was done by uh, UMS, USM uh, so those are based on the uh, literature I found there and uh, fireflies are mainly uh, terrestrial fireflies uh, uh, it's based on the lava where the lava are so the, and terrestrial fireflies are uh, the main group uh, there are a lot of terrestrial fireflies and the whole life cycle is on land itself and then the uh, in the middle is the semi-aquatic fireflies some fireflies yeah these are the one you can find beside streams and waterfall faces so they can actually the lava itself can dive in and catch their prey so they can fish their prey out uh, and uh, aquatic fireflies are quite rare i think less than 20 of them in, mostly in the uh, from japan taiwan korea china uh, thailand uh, so they can you can find this aquatic firefly and the lava itself after becoming uh, hatching out they will go into the uh, stream and then there they will stay in the water and hunt for aquatic snails this lava will have gills, so then they can stay underwater. When they want to pupate, they will walk up to the bank and then they will pupate on the land. And from there, the life cycle will continue. <clears throat> this is to show you that the, the temperate country fireflies, they are, sorry, they have a longer lifespan which will be two or three years because of the winter season they only come out during spring and summer to to mate and then uh, after hatching in autumn by autumn they will go underground and then from there they will hibernate and not hibernate they will stay underground and then they will feed maybe hibernate also yeah so then their life cycle will take two to three years uh, depending on species and uh, firefly lava is uh, the lifespan is the longest in the life uh, and then they are uh, predators yeah. so and they, they they are the top predators in the winter break uh, form uh, they live on many snails <laughs> because it's easy to catch and of course some are specialized in uh, uh, of worms so they also give out light and then there is the warning signal to predators uh, and globally they are, uh, we did a study recently uh, and really on, on the firefly extinction threats so there are three main ones one is habitat destruction as you can see the mangrove fireflies habitat destruction through sand mining, uh, clearing of the river bank aquaculture and planting too near to the river plant. <clears throat> and on the right is US firefly that is uh, uh, restricted to the freshwater swales. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this firefly is very rare and they have around uh, nine, nine subpopulations there. <clears throat> this is about to become a housing estate. Secondly, is the artificial light at night. <laughs> you can see here, uh, most of the west coast of Malaysia is full of lights. Uh, so, which is a threat to the fireflies like communication. And uh, you can see Bangkok <coughs> area oh, full of lights. Uh, and, uh, and the Java Island. <coughs> so, uh, uh, light will affect especially the urban firefly habitats. <coughs> So they, because of the strong light, they may not be able to communicate with each other and then they use quite a lot of energy to do that. And of course the prey itself may be affected by the light. So also when you do firefly watching, it's quite difficult to see when there's a lot of light at the background. And the third extinction threat is the pesticide. <coughs> This is more on agriculture and also in the, uh, especially in America where they stay in the uh, suburb they, and they spray their, their lawn or anything. So that, 
said it's a great threat to them. Uh, then others are the water pollution, especially for the aquatic firefly tourism, which is not responsibly done and will disturb the fireflies and also over housing. Oh, at one point where they use the fireflies to chemicals to for medical research and they catch them and in thousands. So that is no more anymore. Uh, not done any because they can synthesize those chemicals. Uh, but now there's a recent threat in China that they catch them to release in during functions and parties in the city. So all these fireflies will die, uh, and then they do not have a chance to to to, to have their next generation. Climate change, of course, affects everything and <laughs> everyone, especially sea water rise for the mango fireflies. That's limiting. Uh, increase in the river which affects the trees and invasive species are uh, species that can threaten the firefly habitat. Benefits firefly are very beneficial they are part of the ecosystem like any animals before humans uh, around they actually uh, ready the earth for us to stay so when humans come then we sort of disturb <laughs> most of this ecosystem. So uh, they are the top predators in the invertebrate uh, 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 layer, which is at the bottom. So they provide the ecosystem services like uh, reducing the population of snails. That's one way of uh, reducing the population of some invertebrates. Uh, so it, it will be balanced. The, so um, and when you see fireflies, it's a good biological indicator that the ecosystem is healthy. And if you don't see them, there's some, maybe something wrong with the ecosystem. And fireflies are not pests. Actually, they can help reduce snails, uh, which is good for our garden. <laughs> and uh, firefly habitat uh, also includes a lot of other flora and fauna. If you conserve the firefly habitat. And uh, firefly is actually has been long in the human culture, especially in, uh, Japanese, uh, in, the, in the Japanese uh, culture. They have them in the art, the, in poetry, in drawings, in paintings, in, even in movies, enemies. Uh. So firefly to them is part of their culture. And uh, firefly to them is a traditional social pastime when during summer and spring they will go to this firefly habitat and watch firefly and during the after the war uh, industrialization uh, accelerated in japan so most of the water uh, rivers are uh, all became straightened and concretized and the firefly habitats especially for the uh, the genji firefly which is the aquatic firefly uh, habitat is been destroyed so most of these rivers are now been restored and then they usually have a firefly center where they can rear, uh, become nursery for the fireflies and then uh, for them to, to release back into the river and they are the national monument uh, under the law, they are gazetted under the law and fireflies are protected in Japan. And other areas that do firefly work, uh, restoration and conservation uh, example are in uh, Thailand in the army camp itself, you can see on the left, uh, these are fireflies are protected by the army. So in July, they will open the door for visitors to visit. <laughs> and uh, on your right is the Daan Firefly Park in Taipei, in the Taipei Center uh, Financial District. Uh, so they have restored back these uh, wetlands and then they have re released uh, aquatic fireflies into the uh, ponds and streams. And uh, after two years, uh, it's a popular tourist attraction for the locals and also outsiders during the summer and spring uh, summer time. So the uh, this is a joint venture with the local communities. They will be guiding them, uh, the visitors, and then the government will of course uh, look after the infrastructure. And then it's uh, the lamps, the uh, street lights are special. You look at it, it's yellowish, orange. Uh, this will not affect the fireflies, so visitors can go there and see the, watch the fireflies. So uh, 
it's a, a donation by a corporation. So it's a three party uh, restoration work in Taipei. And over in Malaysia, uh, this is the first local community run firefly watching area and the first to be protected. Uh, this is Kampung Kuantan. If you have been there, it's very famous around the world. And then, but the land they are mostly owned by people, so they can only protect in the, the special enactment on restricted uh, activities only. So even when the with, with that also before the casement, there are actually a lot some clearings were done and restoration work is being carried out uh, now. So. Firefly watching as a benefit as well. It can lead to conservation of a firefly habitat because it brings in uh, money, uh, money for the state, for the local communities, and also uh, you can have other uh, uh, people earning through tourism uh, activities. So here, uh, uh, quickly touch on, uh, we have uh, in Firefly Conservation Initiative, uh, which promotes research work and then topic awareness on firefly. And we involve community, uh, forming the firefly communities uh, uh, to, to look after firefly and then citizen sign for people to monitor. And of course, uh, we also have a global network uh, internationally with other countries. So the reason initiative here, we have students studying fireflies in Bukit Kiara. And then we have a lot of activities with the firefly ambassadors that were formed to take people around in Bukit Kiara. And uh, we also have Sungai Kimun, a firefly community that was formed there to look after the nursery so that we can plant back some of the disturbed areas in, along the river. And, uh, uh, down and we also do some publication work uh, and we celebrate the World Fire Friday since 2018. So in July, first week end of July annually, we will celebrate World Fire Friday and it started in 2018 uh, and now we have uh, many countries uh, joining us uh, to celebrate the World Fire Friday including the, some local groups in Malaysia like Krim, Tolo uh, uh, Intan and Cherating. Uh, so they also celebrate Firefly and, and also Bukit Kara, they also celebrate together with us. Um, these are examples of Firefly communities uh, in Malaysia that we form. And the uh, latest one is uh, Bukit Kara Firefly Ambassadors. And, uh, we also, it's a fireflies uh, extinction and threats are global concern. Uh, so, uh, so we form, uh, we have formed two uh, international, uh, one international NGO, the Fireflyers International Network, which is uh, more on the, uh, on the arts and science of fireflies, uh, more on awareness. And then we have the IUCN, Firefly Specialist Group, and this is to assess the individual firefly threats of extinction. So we need to assess them and give them a, a, a cut, uh, endangered, uh, or threatened, uh, vulnerable. So we give them uh, this so that the countries uh, will have to uh, do their uh, to conserve these fireflies. And uh, so this is uh, work by IUCN, uh, the Firefly Specialist Group. And then and just to uh, let you know how the Fireflyers got together since 1990. So they have the first meeting in 2007. So these are the two founders, Raphael and then you know. So these are the two founders of the Fireflies International Network. And then uh, we have a few international firefly symposium uh, and on your upper right you, you, we have one in Subang Jaya and that's where a uh, very important document the Selangor Declaration on Firefly Conservation was uh, written down uh, and then uh, in 2017 
we the Firefly International Network was formally formed. And uh, this year's uh, Firefly Symposium was cancelled due to COVID and it will be held in uh, next year. Um, then uh, fireflies, uh, especially the mango fireflies, uh, so I, and we, uh, we did a key biodiversity area workshop uh, on that uh, because uh, uh, mango fireflies are all along the river and they're quite long and linear and then they also are habitats for other threatened animals also so it will be good that to protect these uh, mango fireflies is through the key biodiversity diversity area which is under the IUCN listing uh, and um, it's also possible to also uh, assess uh, individual rare fireflies also but, uh, the, but for a key biodiversity area, for mango firefly, actually is more uh, useful. So finally, how can you help? Uh, especially when you watch fireflies, you wash it responsibly. You don't shine a torch at the firefly and then it shouldn't have flash photography because you won't get anything from there and you don't disturb them or collect them. And then you, if there is a trail, you have to keep to the trail. You don't go off the trail and you trample the firefly baby and also the firefly adult, like this female. So you keep to the trail and also you step on their snails. Also. <laughs> so um, lighting wise, uh, which, uh, like the street lamps in a firefly area, you can actually block it, redirect the light. You can, if you have lights, uh, you can switch it off uh, and then you can change the color and then also the intensity so so this won't disturb the firefly and of course uh, if you have a gar big garden you avoid using pesticides and you can report firefly sightings because uh, it's very important there are so many fireflies around Malaysia but uh, you still haven't uh, studied most of it so you can send it to MNS, that's my email there, conservation too. Uh, and then uh, you can send your report through email with a photo of the firefly. Or you can go to iNaturalist, that is a firefly site there, a firefly category there, and you can post it, your pictures there also. And then you support the MNS Firefly Conservation Initiative as uh, working as volunteers for citizen science. And then also you can form a firefly community in your area if there are fireflies there. So you, and also you can create awareness uh, and then join the network of firefly communities. Uh, and you can also advocate and lobby for dark sky at firefly habitats. If you know the place is very uh, good for fireflies, you can advocate for dark sky for protection of firefly areas in your area. So, and please do celebrate uh, World Firefly Day every July. And this is a uh, recent poster that I got, leave, leaves alone. So, if you sweep your garden, actually you should leave the leaf uh, the, so that they can let it rot. And because these are place uh, leaves are also uh, places for other invertebrates to stay and hide themselves. So and firefly lava likes this also, and the uh, prey, the snails, they like this uh, leaf litter on your garden. So you should keep them, and it can put it will it will rot and fertilize. The worker will get them. So and then they will be gone. So this is a very good poster and then uh, there will be a quiz and these are the prizes uh, uh, for the first three winners it's a book on the fireflies in Kuala Selangor Nature Park there will be a, a bookmark and then a car sticker so thank you very much uh, if you have any question yeah you can ask okay thank you Sunny um, Bas uh, basically very informative and also it has really showed that MNS uh, with uh, Sunny uh, leading these uh, programs in the community 
uh, Habibun as well. I, I, I know there are a few other people in, in this uh, program that are leading the community fireflies. And actually Malaysia is kind of leading the, the whole uh, program as well. So a lot of uh, efforts have been done. Thank you so much for sharing that. So we're now on to Q&A and also to quiz. So I'll send out the link for the quiz. The prizes, you already know, there are, th there are three prizes. So the first three that comes in uh, the fastest with the highest number of scores, uh, and then um, will be the winners, all right? Then we'll contact you after that uh, to get the address. So now I pass over to Lilan Ping, who will help us with the Q&A. Uh, so we come back uh, in 10 minutes uh, to, to look at the quiz result. Thanks, Lemping. Uh, thanks, Uti. Uh, so uh, we have uh, quite a lot of questions here. So I try to consolidate a bit. Uh, okay. The first one is, uh, what is the... Okay, the female and male, uh, the light organ difference is so. Uh, which one is more brighter and how do we tell the difference? Well, uh, because of males have two light organs and definitely they will be brighter and the light production can be controlled by both sex or so. So it depends if they can actually produce a brighter light, the females also can produce a brighter light if they want to. So, but in the but if you see a uh, flashing firefly, uh, actually, uh, it's quite hard to know which is male and female until you study them. Uh, so, but mainly uh, the flying ones are usually uh, with a pattern. The flash with a pattern are males, and uh, female usually answer back. Uh, with a simple, more simple flash. Uh, this in, in general, so, but there's a lot of uh, work need to be done on the flash pattern itself. Huh? Okay, uh, the next one, sorry. Yeah. Is it finished? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, yeah. the, the next question is Tiro, uh, P -T -E -R -O -P -T -Y -X. is it the the one that found in Malaysia. Uh, yeah, Protex. Uh, the question is, is it found at SNP Gang Bank Grove area as well? What steps are taken to protect these fireflies? Okay, uh, the Protex is, is a genus that is uh, commonly found in the mangroves of uh, Southeast Asia, as you can see earlier in the map, and Malaysia is one of them. So these are uh, tropics uh, are found, the, the famous one, the tropic standard is found in Sungai Selangor. Uh, so, and it's uh, been protected now by the state, under the state enactment. Uh, so in KSNP, uh, you can find another tropics, which is the Valida. Tropics Valida is non-synchronous. Um, and uh, KSMP itself uh, is now gazetted as a forest reserve. So that means the protection for the firefly is there. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, the other question, which is quite interesting, is there any correlation of firefly and existence of crocodiles? Do the presence of firefly indicate presence of crocodile or is this just a myth? Well, these are the, the mangrove uh, ecosystem. You have a lot of animals. Uh, so, and crocodiles to themselves uh, stay in the water and then land. So, there is not a coincidence or what. Um, they, they are, the crocodiles are there in most mangrove rivers, uh, although you don't really see them. Uh, of course, uh, some rivers you can see them more like Sungai Petang or Rambau, you can uh, Lingi, you can see more crocodiles. Uh, uh, even in Sungai Selangor, there are crocodiles. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the fireflies habitat, these mangrove fireflies are, the, are at the mangroves. And of course, the crocodile stays at the estuarine area, so they are 
yeah, that's their habitat. So it's, it's not a coincidence, but that's where they are found, these uh, mangrove animals. Okay, so uh, the next question is, uh, as we know, the eco, uh, this is from the ecotourism is one of the factors that impact the firefly and their habitat. So the question is how or what is the best way to do ecotourism practice for firefly watching? Yeah, yeah the best practice, uh, if you go around a uh, firefly watching area and then you can see some, some, uh, some people do it. Uh, uh, okay, firefly watching area, there are a few types. One is the people doing it full time, and then there are also some as when when people come, and then they will take them on the boat. Yeah. So uh, fireflies um, awareness are lacking yeah, among among many people. Actually, do not know much about firefly, and uh, life history and all those things and how they can disturb them. So that's why uh, awareness is really needed and all this uh, firefly watching area needs to be uh, trained. These people taking them needs to be trained and then also uh, uh, given more information about firefly so they can relate them to the tourists itself and then they themselves need to know uh, how they can actually uh, uh, take people around without disturbing the fireflies. Uh. So, so as you can see in the Kampung Angtan area, uh, they are trained. Uh, so, FRIM do give uh, some lessons to them on how to bring people around. Uh, so, they will have some knowledge on that. And of course, uh, you, uh, in uh, those that uh, not trained, uh, we should we have to go and train them and give them advice uh, how they can best manage their their firefly tours and also even the firefly area itself. And they depend on these uh, earnings on firefly watching, so they should uh, know how to take care of their firefly area. So. Training them and capacity build them is very important uh, step. So that's how uh, they can have more responsibility in their firefly watching. Okay, the next question. Uh, fire, so a firefly is a bio indicator for the environment. If yes, how it could be contribute to our surroundings and ways to safeguard, safeguard them efficiently? Well, um, fireflies, if the habitat uh, requirement is there, they are food, they are shelter, uh, moist area, so uh, you can, the firefly can, will be able to survive as long as other threats are not there, like lights and all those things. So, um they are good indicator uh, if you stay somewhere let's say um, near the forest uh, or some remnant green area and then there are five five day uh, that will the the in the five five will indicate the area have food for them that means there's an ecosystem there already whether it's a uh, full or non full but the uh, there are food there, there are insects and other invertebrates living there, there are moist area there, maybe some maybe a stream is nearby. So and this will indicate the area is uh, uh, able to support the firefly. And then you suddenly you will see a development will come in. And so uh, how how can you uh, uh, advise the developer uh, what to do uh, like even if if they put in lights and then they must be shielded and redirected uh. so these are some of the things uh, you can help uh, to to safeguard the uh, firefly area uh, i hope that answers the question 
Okay, uh, next question. Apart from congregation firefly zone, CFZ, is there any solidified firefly catch out place in uh, Peninsula Malaysia or Sabah and Sarawak? Uh, sorry, uh, is there what? Uh, uh, is there any solidified flying fly, firefly catch out place in Peninsula Malaysia or uh, Abbas and Sarawak? Oh, I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> I was <laughs> okay. Then uh, we skipped uh, to the next one. Now uh, 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 this is like a resident uh, near. Is have the street light in Taman Persekutuan Bukit Kiara been replaced to ensure the lighting is firefly friendly? Do you know that? Oh <laughs> uh, well, I all I know is uh. These are the mass produced produce, uh, LED lights. Uh. So uh, you need to specially produce a uh, firefly friendly light. And of course, before you can do that, also you need to uh, catch the firefly. I mean, you need to study the firefly itself. Uh. So and see uh, what color range uh, uh, they can, they can, they won't be disturbed. Uh. Like you see in Taiwan, they have a special light, uh, special weight blank for that light. And then it, uh, those are the one that won't disturb the firefly. And that is specially developed uh, by a, a corporation. So, uh, and you can't find it uh, mass produced. Uh, this. You can't find it commercially. Okay. Uh, Learn Ping, maybe uh, one more question. Okay, and then because time is okay. running short. Yes, yes. So the last question is: uh, Does any species of firefly uh, bites and harmful to other organisms, include the human? Well, is, is it harmful to human? Is it? Yeah, that's a question. Yeah. Oh, well, firefly don't bite you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think they can. Uh, they can break your skin if they they have mandibles, <laughs> but I don't think they can break your skin uh, unless someone got bitten by a fire with a giant firefly. I I don't think they can break your skin. So, uh, but uh, try not to eat them. Uh, they are toxin and they stay bad. <laughs> so, so that's what my advice. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sunny. So I pass back to. Uh, this is the end of the Q&A session. We go back to T. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you Lan Ping, and thank, thank you, Sunny. So uh, maybe some of the questions are not answered. We can uh, copy that and save yeah. it, and we can um, uh, put that into Facebook, uh, the answers, or in, and also into the WhatsApp group as well. Okay, thanks, Lan Ping. Uh, basically, the prizes today are sponsored by um, MNS HQ, uh, the book uh, written by uh, Sunny and uh, a couple other things if you're actually um of course we only have three prizes and uh, if you want to buy one you can also go to the shop mns the online shop so i'm putting the link now into the chat box okay um so the winners are we need the drum roll while i get the answers okay hold on eh? quite a lot of responses today thank you so much and um, the winners okay here okay there you go you can, can see the screen right okay so the winners are um, coming in this is uh, uh, why why we go the second person to finish with full marks is uh, Yap Yap Ken Yap Ken Wee, and the third person with full marks is uh, Ko Su Su Chien. Okay, congratulations! And uh, those of you who uh, actually there are many others who completed with full marks as well. Anyway, but we only have three prizes. So thank you all for participating. And of course, you will, uh, will receive your e-certificates as well. And if you want to buy the book, um, 
to support MNS, you can all uh, welcome to use that link. So thank you again uh, for joining us today. Um, I think to, to sum it up in, uh, there's so many points to sum up, but there's only one point I would like to make is that we need, we need more researchers in the field. So we hope that this, um, uh, this talk by uh, Mr. Uh, Sunny Wong uh, will inspire some of you, especially the, the young ones, maybe in a few years later, you can take up the role as, um, as researchers because there is actually not much information uh, available. Uh, a lot of work have been done in Malaysia, but many other countries do not have, okay? So to wrap it up, the next talk is on the 7th of November, the same, uh, the same time, 2 p.m. The speakers will be um, people, uh, the fisheries department of uh, Malaysia, and we will be talking about the Udang, uh, Udang Gala, uh, which is uh, one of the, um, the prize uh, catches in uh, Sungai Linggi, Sungai Rambau. Okay, so join us next time. Thanks for now. And uh, thank you, Sunny, again, uh, and Lenping, and thank you to all our audience for joining us. And uh, we'll yeah, see you, you again um, next time. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.